the FDA recently granted priority review to a new agent, enosidinib. It's a targeted inhibitor of mutant IDH2, and it's a first-in-class therapy for relapsed or refractory AML. And to talk about this new agent, I'm with uh, Aiton Stein, who is an MD and a hematologic oncologist at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Now, these mutations aren't seen in widely in AML, but how many patients percentage-wise do have some of these? Yeah, it's, it's actually more common than a lot of people think. So it occurs in approximately 10 to 15 percent of patients wow. with newly diagnosed acute myeloid leukemia. That's the IDH2 mutation. Then there's actually a, an additional group of patients, about 10 percent of patients, who have an IDH1 mutation. The abstract I'm going to be presenting today focuses on the IDH2 patients, but it's, it's fairly common after this FLT3 mutation that is the most common abnormality that we see in AML. So talk a little bit about inositidib. What is it? Sure. Sure. So um, it's been widely known that patients with a mutation in IDH2, what happens is that a substance gets produced by those mutant cells called beta-hydroxyglutarate. And when you have increased levels of this beta-hydroxyglutarate, it sort of freezes these myeloid cells in an undifferentiated state. They sort of get stuck as babies or teenagers. And what this mutant um, does is it, a lot, it, it keeps those cells from, from growing. What the inhibitor enosidinib does, which blocks mutant IDH2, is it lowers these levels of this beta-hydroxyglutarate, this abnormal substance, allowing those immature cells to start maturing again. And that's essentially what we do to cure leukemia. It's a differentiation therapy rather than a cytotoxic therapy. Now, this is a good-sized phase 1-2 study. We've got about 239 patients. Yeah, that was actually, in the abstract. Yeah, so this is actually just the phase 1 um, oh, experience and the dose expansion arms of the phase 1 experience, wow. which is 239 patients. There's actually a phase 2 portion of the study, which we're not talking about at this meeting. <laughs> okay. So describe the patients and the study. The study started out as a typical phase one dose expansion, I'm sorry, dose escalation study. Um, and when it looked like the drug was actually quite effective, we decided to add on different arms to see if it was effective in various subgroups of patients. So two of those arms were patients with relapsed and refractory acute myeloid leukemia. One of those arms was patients with untreated acute myeloid leukemia. And then there was a fourth arm in patients who really didn't fall into any of the other three arms so we could get those patients on the study. Um, so what the focus of this abstract is, is those patients in the dose escalation portion that had relapsed and refractory acute myeloid leukemia, and then those two um, expansion arms of patients with relapsed and refractory acute myeloid leukemia. So what did you find? Well, we were very excited about what we found. The first thing we found is that the drug is very well tolerated. We really didn't see um, any significant grade three to four um, adverse events that we thought were related to the study drug. We thought all the adverse events primarily were related to the underlying disease. So you can imagine patients with acute myeloid leukemia have a variety of um, unfortunate health events happen to them, and those were what we thought happened. But I think what was more exciting is that the complete remission rate in the, with this drug um, was approximately 40%. There was a true complete, well, I'm sorry, the overall response rate, um, we should redo that. So the overall response rate was 40%. The complete remission rate was 20%, and then patients who had either a complete remission with incomplete count recovery or a partial remission or a morphologic leukemia-free state, um, that comprised an additional 20%. So if you add the 20% complete remission rate, 20% slightly less than a complete remission um, response rate, that adds up to 40%. Additionally, we saw that um, the overall survival in the entire group of patients was 9.3 months, which is quite, um, quite impressive in a patient population with relapse and refractory AML. And in those patients who achieved a complete remission, the overall survival, median overall survival, was 19.7 months, so over a year and a half. So there's evidence the drug was doing exactly what it was meant to do. Exactly, exactly. So where from here? What's next? Well, actually, the drug is right now before the Food and Drug Administration uh, being reviewed for accelerated approval. We're hoping we're going to be able to get this drug to our patients um, quickly, um, those patients with relapsed and refractory AML. There's an ongoing randomized phase three study in relapsed and refractory AML of this drug versus standard of care um, salvage chemotherapy. Um, and then there are some earlier studies that are combining this drug with what the current standard of care is, either induction chemotherapy or the hypomethylating agent azacitidine. So are you optimistic at this point? I'm extraordinarily optimistic. I think for a drug that is an oral medication that leads to a complete remission rate of 20%, an overall response rate of 40%, an overall survival of 9.3 months, in all patients, in 19.7 months in patients with uh, complete remission in this heavily pretreated patient population, uh, I am very encouraged that this drug is going to make a real difference to these patients um, with really a devastating disease.
So do you think eventually it might get used earlier? We're hoping so. So we're hoping that in patients with, when it gets combined with standard of care therapies, it will be more effective than those standard of care therapies alone. And then there's a whole portion of this study that's looking at patients with untreated acute myeloid leukemia and seeing how well this drug looks um, in the patients who have never received any chemotherapy before. So the drug is inacidinib? Inacidinib. And right. uh, take a look at the in-print and uh, online material, please, for the coverage from ASCO and for ASH Clinical News. I'm Rick McGuire.